Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Scrum Creation Git tutorial video. Today we're going to be working with optimization, so we're going to be dealing with two things. First thing is room bounds and portals, and the second thing is occlusion planes, or cubes, barriers, call them what you will. So uh, optimization is obviously uh, really important because when you've got sort of a, a big scale dungeon or a castle or whatever you want to call it, area, uh, you're going to have a lot of items, a lot of things for the game to render, and it's going to get pretty heavy. So, what you need to do is a lot of optimization in terms of um, putting these room bounds in, portals, occlusion planes, because it'll separate your dungeon and less of the load on the uh, your sort of your machine on the game when you load a cell. So, let's explain what uh, room room bounds and portals are. Room bounds will do what I basically just said. Uh, they will separate your dungeon into sections so that each section, when you're standing in it, is the only section that will be rendered by the game so everything else won't be loaded, which, uh, as you can might imagine, is really useful. So, as you can see, my dungeon's a pretty nice, nice shape, nice and square, easy to do, but your dungeon might be a bit of a, a funny shape if it's a cave or something, so uh, you'll have to be careful uh, where you sort of uh, separate your dungeon up, that'll make a bit more sense uh, in a bit. So I'm basically going to separate this up into, I'm not going to actually do all this, but what I would do is I'd separate that part there, the tower, uh, that room there, that room there, that room, that room, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, yep. Yeah. I'd separate into six parts. So what we want is when we're standing in, say, this room here, we don't want all of this loaded, and that's what room bounds will do for us. Uh, it'll only load what is within the room bound that we've created. So, first thing that you really want to do is click on View, Show and Hide, and make sure that the box is ticked for Portals and Rooms. Now, when you tick it, you're not going to see anything because you haven't made any yet. So, you want to click on a, a fairly large item, which is usually good to pick a, a large floor piece in the first room that you want to put a portal in. And you want to click the button here. It's just a cube, nothing in the cube tap that and it'll try and shape it around the object that you've selected that's why you want to pick a large object so you want to make sure that your snap to grid is also on this is pretty important when it comes to linking the uh, the room bounds together which I'll explain in a minute so first of all you want to decide like I have what you're going to separate up so I'm going to keep this room as its own section so I'm going to make sure that I get every item within this box because if you don't get every item then anything that's sort of half within this box is going to disappear completely. It's not going to render it. By render I mean sort of a load it up, make it visible. So there we go, drop it down a bit. So you're going to want to do this for each room. I'm just going to do it for two to show you how to do it and then you can go ahead and uh, do the rest on your own. Now I'll click Control and D on that portal room to get things moving along a bit quicker and as you can tell it's duplicated another one on top of it. Uh, Re-click into there, don't select a gizmo, click off it and then drag it. Click and drag. Uh, it can be quite picky to sort of move these things around. Now the reason I put Snap to Grid on is that I can snap them together perfectly like that which is really important because what we're doing is anything outside of these um, rooms will not be rendered so if you happen to have a a small gap between them and you walk into that little gap there you're basically in the void and nothing will be loaded and you could fall through the floor and disappear into oblivion which wouldn't be good as you might imagine so you want to link these together I'll explain another reason why they need to be touching in a moment so really going to separate these rooms up nicely into sections so you really want to be careful that when you're resizing and moving and selecting things that you you're careful what you click in and the gadgets can be quite fiddly it's really really annoying not the the best system but you'll get used to it I apologize for any flickering on the uh, the render window looks like uh, it's free seizure day by the creation kit so once I've got all my rooms, uh, we're just going to imagine that I've done the rooms for that there and that one over there and that one back there. Uh, you're going to want to link them together because like I said, each room, uh, the items in each room are going to be the only thing loaded when you walk in there. So if I turned around and looked back through that door there, 
uh, I wouldn't see any of this here it wouldn't load it so what you need to do is you need to link these two rooms together with a portal which is sort of like a window to look into the other room to tell it to load anything through that portal into the room it's connected to so that when you're looking through there it's still going to load some items in there for you and then when you walk through it'll happen the same way back but it will still not render anything else around it so we are going to need a portal here so the first thing that you want to do you want to click one of the two rooms uh, either one will do and then once you've clicked on it and you've got it selected make sure you have click on the P button for portal and click the room again can be quite picky and it should appear you might have a bit of trouble getting it to appear and these are the most fiddly things to get put into place and get moved and you can accidentally select the actual room bound and the portal so there's a really useful little tool for this and it's that one there with the square with another square in it if you click that then you will only be able to select portals uh, within the render window so you can't select none of this so you won't be accidentally selecting anything else and then you can use the gizmos to make it a bit larger so it's a little easier to work with to begin with and we want to spin this round as you can see it's actually quite annoying now the line you'll see here is te uh, basically telling you which room it's linked to so we'll also want it linked to that room so we'll do that in a moment but we're going to drag this into place so this portal is going to be your window to look into another room to make sure that you're loading the bits in that room as well so that when you look through this door you're not going to see nothing which is what will happen if you didn't put this in and then we're going to we're going to want to drop this down and we want to have this cover the entire door if we can it can be quite difficult but you'll get the hang of it uh, just sort of save regularly when you've set a portal up to one room because it can be uh, real tricky quite a lot of mess uh, another good uh, hint or tip if you will that isn't mentioned in the, B in, in the Bethesda tutorial sorry um, they don't tell you that these portals can be a bitch with lighting uh, I've had portals before I've portaled an entire area and when I've put lights in it they tend to flicker and the portals interfere with the light like it doesn't know what the hell it's meant to be rendering for like the, the lights so you've really got to watch that but if you do it nice and professionally and clean uh, your lights shouldn't shouldn't have any problems but it, it's good to check it over now like I said we need to link this portal to that room now remember we won't be able to select this because of the the portal section here so make sure you've got your portal selected and then tick that off hold down control on the keyboard I don't think it matters which and then click on that room there and basically we've got uh, the room bound and the portal selected and we want to link the two together so you're going to click this nice button up here that one just there on the right of the P and you'll see a line link so these two rooms are linked now so if we look through this portal here we will be able to load everything in this portal or in sight of that window and everything in this one hopefully that makes sense to you and again the reason why uh, the snap to grid needs to be on to keep these tight together is because if we had a gap there then obviously the portal wouldn't work properly it wouldn't link between the two so if snap to grid isn't on then you can get the slightest inch off and it's going to cause problems so you want your snap to grid on most of the time and you'll want to repeat the process for each of those so you'd obviously uh, duplicate another room uh, you'd separate that area up there I'm not going to do it perfectly but again you'd repeat the steps and you put a portal in there fit it in the doorway and uh, continue that way now one thing I will say is with very very long distances um, especially in sort of caves you can have a, a third room back there have them linked together and it won't load through two portals or it won't load a certain distance and items will start disappearing so you'll have to sort of adjust your dungeon for that and sort of put steps down because it's only going to load a certain distance when you're, you're really looking through this room here so really long distances can be quite affected by this so hopefully that helps uh, and make some sort of sense like I said you've really just got to be uh, careful when selecting these and placing these and make sure that the snap to grids on and just link them together and that will 
only render what is in each room so that you should see a, a nice improvement in performance because if you didn't do this and you're in this room and you look this way it would be loading absolutely everything and it causes the game to stutter so it just prevents that basically so I'm just going to get rid of these and uh, get them out of the way I've already done this and I won't actually be saving this myself another really useful thing uh, something that's uh, a little more basic and maybe easier to work with a good way of doing it is if you've ever messed with a Far Cry map editor and Far Cry 3 is coming out soon if you don't know what it is go and check it out but if you've ever messed with the Far Cry editor then you'll have used occlusion planes and these do a very similar thing but it just doesn't load anything past the plane that you're looking at so I'm just gonna show you how to do that so I'm gonna click a fairly large item again I'm gonna click the square with an O in it and that will be an occlusion plane I'm gonna click there and it's quite small actually so we're gonna resize that so what this should do is if we were to put this sideways when it stops spinning if we were to put this sideways and put it in a wall there uh, theoretically now if you were looking you if you were standing here and looking at that wall there it wouldn't be loading anything behind it which sort of does the same uh, kind of thing as our portal rooms do so that's another good way of doing it so you'd have to sort of separate these out but if you were to do that as far as I know that would uh, really affect the the doorway there I haven't really messed with these too much uh, the preferred method is really with the uh, room bounds to be honest so you'd have to keep them out the way of doorways uh, there is a button up here which apparently links them but it doesn't seem to work anywhere near as good as room bounds so just be aware of that but occlusion walls are good for just um, putting a big block if you've got two big sections which may not be uh, linked in any sort of way and you want to be in the one section and not be looking through to the other one then you can just put an occlusion wall in so it doesn't load anything behind it uh, to be honest I think all the kit updates have seemed to mess with this a bit and I don't think it works as well as it, it did on the first release but you can try it out for yourself and see uh, one, two uh, hints, tips, or tricks. Uh, one little thing to mention is you can tap the number two on your keyboard when selecting an item to get the gizmos to appear and disappear because you might notice that your gizmos don't seem to want to show when you're putting occlusion walls or barriers down and you can't resize them. So that will help with that. Uh, I think that is pretty much everything. A pretty lengthy tutorial, pretty detailed. Might be a bit confusing, but as long as you follow my method, uh, all you really need to know is that that will just hopefully improve the performance in your dungeon and spread it out into to different sections. You can also go and check out the uh, Bethesda one. I just thought I'd put mine, uh, my own little nice sort of laid back version on for you guys. So that that is pretty much it. Uh, that's how you do occlusions. You can also do uh, big block versions like that, and they'll be massive blocks, so you can put that over an entire room if you had like a, a teleport into there. So, all sorts of things to mess with. Uh, they're sort of blocked into their, their own little section there, so you can sort of play with things, uh, check it out. You can do all sorts of little things with them. But that should uh, separate the rooms out and cut down on lag. So, that is my performance video. I don't think there's uh, really many more tips apart from lighting just watch lighting with them and also uh, make sure you don't have any more than four shadow lights in a cell because that causes lag as well so that's it that is everything on optimization that I can really think of at the moment uh, thank you very much for watching I hope you found it helpful please leave comments visit my antisocial website and my main website uh, I won't be going into game now to see if this works because it's not something that you can see so Thank you very much and I will speak to you next time.